Good morning. I welcome you all <coughs> to this session of fluid mechanics. Now, if you recall last time we were discussing about the buoyancy, phenomena of buoyancy. What is that? Again, just if we recall it, a body, if a solid body is either partially immersed or fully immersed in a fluid, the net horizontal force in any direction because of the pressure exerted by the fluid on the surface of the body is 0. But the body experiences a net vertical force in the upward direction. That means, the resultant of the pressure forces on the surface of the body that is immersed body either fully or partially is in the vertical direction, upward vertical direction and its magnitude is equal to the weight of the displaced volume of the fluid. What is the displaced volume? That is the volume immersed volume that is the volume of the solid immersed in the fluid. In case of a fully immersed body that is submerged body, then the displaced volume is the volume of the whole body itself. So, weight of that volume of the fluid is the magnitude of the upward hydrostatic pressure force which is known as buoyant force and this phenomena is known as buoyancy. Now, then afterwards we recognize that for an equilibrium condition of the body, first let us consider the submerged body, but it is very, uh, it is valid for both submerged and partially immersed body that for equilibrium the primary condition is that the weight of the body should balance the buoyancy force, upward buoyancy force by magnitude and also by the line of action. That means, weight of the body should be equal to that of the buoyant force and these two forces must be collinear for equilibrium of the body either in floating condition that is partially immersed condition or fully immersed or submerged condition. Now, the question comes that probably you have already read earlier in mechanics that an equilibrium is of three types. One is stable equilibrium, another is unstable equilibrium, another is neutral equilibrium. What is meant by stable equilibrium in general is that if a body is in equilibrium under several forces at a particular instant. Now, if you disturb the body to just depart from its initial equilibrium position, whether the body is able to come back to its initial position or not. If the body is able to come back to its initial position, that means force system acting on the body is such that it makes it possible to restore its initial equilibrium position, then this type of equilibrium is known as stable equilibrium. That means, equilibrium is stable, it is a question of reproduction just the body is capable of reproducing its initial equilibrium position under any small perturbation to distort or to allow the body to depart from this initial position, it will again come back to its initial position. Now, unstable equilibrium is such that if the body is in equilibrium under such several forces at a particular position, if you disturb the body to depart from its initial equilibrium position, the force system is such that it does not allow the body to come back to its initial position. It goes on departing from its initial equilibrium position and in fact, the entire equilibrium condition of the body is destroyed. This is known as unstable equilibrium. So, equilibrium is there at a particular position at a particular instant, but this is unstable, unstable equilibrium. Another type of equilibrium is a neutral equilibrium, which means that if you give a disturbance to the body, then the body will neither come back to its original position nor it will go on departing further and destroy its equilibrium condition, neither of these two, but body will remain again in the equilibrium condition at that point. That is sleeping person, that a sleeping person if you take him from one position to another position, he will be keeping there itself in equilibrium like that, a neutral equilibrium. A very simple example probably you have read at your school level, that if you place a marble on a hill or on a table of convex shape, if you place it it may be in equilibrium that the weight may be balanced by the reaction force if there is a contact surface, but if you slightly part up it that means if you slightly push it this will go down because of the convexity of the surface that means this is in unstable equilibrium. Similarly, if you place a body on a surface which is concave inward and you place a body it is in equilibrium the weight of the body is equal to the reaction force. If you give a displacement, then it will again come back to its original position because of the concavity of the surface. That means, this is a and this is an example of stable equilibrium. A neutral equilibrium example is very simple on a flat table, 
flat table if you place a body for example this is in neutral equilibrium if you place it here it is in equilibrium if you place it here if you just do not consider the rolling of it in the so it is in equilibrium. So that means this is a concept of neutral equilibrium. Now in case of buoyancy this perturbation to study whether the body is in neutral stable or unstable equilibrium depends upon its perturbation in angular direction. That means if we just displace the body or give a small rotation then we see its stability. That is why sometimes this stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium, neutral equilibrium is uh, coupled or is referred to as angular stability of the body. So, body is linearly stable when weight and buoyancy force are equal in magnitude and are collinear. But whether a small angular displacement allows the body to come back to its original position or not is referred to as angular stability or in general to stable, unstable and neutral equilibrium. So, let us now <coughs> see that let this be the free surface of the liquid. Now, let us consider first submerged bodies, first consider submerged bodies, well first consider submerged bodies. Now, what is the condition? Let us see a body like this, let us see a body like this, let us consider. Now, you see the center of gravity and center of buoyancy should be in this line. Now, there may be three options. The point regarding the point of application of center of gravity and center of buoyancy. One option is that center of gravity may be, let this is center of buoyancy, center of gravity may be below the center of buoyancy. Another option is that center of gravity may be coinciding with the center of buoyancy. Another option is that center of gravity will be above the center of buoyancy. This depends upon the relative distribution of mass over the volume. When gravity is below the center of buoyancy, it is bottom heavy. When gravity is above the center of buoyancy, it is top heavy and when the mass is distributed uniformly throughout the volume, these two coincide. Now, let us first consider when the center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy. What happened? Through center of buoyancy, the buoyancy force A B acts. Through center of gravity, the weight W acts and they are collinear and equal, always W is equal to A B. So, this is in equilibrium. Let us give a small tilt or angular hill of this body in this direction towards the right. Let me draw this figure. Now, in this tilted condition, let us see the body. Let us see the body. Now, this is this axis of symmetry or the original vertical axis, whatever you can tell. Now, the center of gravity with respect to the body is unchanged. This is of course not true for all cases. I will explain afterwards. In certain cases, if some solid part of the body moves, for example, when the ship moves, when a ship moves in a uh, river, some of the cargoes within the ship moves from one part to other part. So, therefore, the mass may change. But if we consider a tight solid body, the center of gravity remains unchanged and the weight acts vertically with center of gravity. Now, the center of buoyancy also remain unchanged in this case. This is because what the center of buoyancy is also the center of the volume and when in submerged bodies the entire volume is submerged. So, here also entire volume is submerged in both the condition the bodies are submerged. So, center of buoyancy also will not change through which the buoyancy forces acts. Now, in this case you see these two parallel forces creates a moment or a couple which is now this is the direction of tilt. So, a couple is generated in the opposite direction whose magnitude is W or A B whatever you call both the forces are equal times this distance times this distance. If you consider this distance as X W into X that means in simple we can tell in these circumstances this A B and W creates a couple which is opposite to the direction of the tilt and this couple is known as restoring couple. So, this couple is restoring couple that means which restore its position that means this couple helps the body to come to its equilibrium position. Now, if you give a tilt or hill in the left direction you will see again the body a buoyancy force and the gravity force makes 
a couple in the opposite direction to the angular heel of the body. That means it always creates a restoring couple and helps the body to come into equilibrium. So, when G is below B, we see the equilibrium is stable equilibrium. So, this is stable equilibrium, stable equilibrium, stable equilibrium. Now, let us consider a case when G is above B. That means the distribution of the <coughs> force is like this distribution of the force sorry distribution of the mass over the volume is such that means it is top heavy that means g is this is g and let b is below g that means through g the weight of the body acts and through b the buoyancy force acts but it is in equilibrium that means w is a b this is valid now, if you give a tilt, it is very simple school level thing. So, if you give a tilt in the same direction, that means right wise, in the, towards the right, if you give a tilt, this is the original vertical axis. Here again, in this condition, the gravity remains the same, the center of gravity and also the center of buoyancy. Now, you see these two forces, W and FB they create a moment which is in the same direction to that of the angular tilt. That means, when we give a tilt in this case, the two forces A B and W whose collinearity is destroyed, they create a moment in the same direction or couple in the same direction and helps the body to tilt further. So, therefore, the body departs from its original position further and further and equilibrium is never attained. This case it is known as unstable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium and this couple uh, under this condition the value of this moment that means W or F B times this perpendicular distance is known as overturning or destroying couple. Sometimes we call overturning, this is the terminology in mechanics or destroying couple, the couple which destroys the equilibrium. Therefore, we see now in this case also if you give a heel in the left direction, you can again examine that the couple created by the destruction of the collinearity between FB and W, the couple created by these two force again will be in the same direction of the angular tilt and creates a overturning and destroying couple and makes the equilibrium as unstable equilibrium. Okay? Now, the last possibility is the possibility that G and B coincides. That means, this is the case where the weight, uh, sorry, mass of the liquid is distributed, this is G, uniformly over the entire volume. That means, the weight acts to the center of gravity and the same point is the center of buoyancy, that is A B. That means, the mass is uniformly distributed over the entire volume. In this case, it is just like a neutral equilibrium as I have told earlier. That means, if you displace it, sorry, if you displace this under the displaced condition, that means, if you give angular yield in this direction, G B both will be same. So, this will be the new vertical lines and they will be again collinear. This is W and this is F B. So, it will be again collinear. That means, under any angular location and at any angular displacement at this position it will be in equilibrium. It will neither go further in this direction or will come back in this direction. This is known as neutral equilibrium. This is known as neutral equilibrium. So, therefore, what uh, we conclude is that when a body is totally submerged, the condition for stable equilibrium that means, angular stability that if the body is given a slight angular heel in either direction, whether it will come back and not depends upon the fact that when G the center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy, the body is angular, body has this angular stability means stable equilibrium. If the center of gravity is above the center of buoyancy, the body is in unstable equilibrium. That means, it does not have the angular stability. If you give a small angular heel in either direction or part of the body, it will go on departing from its original equilibrium condition and the entire equilibrium will be destroyed. This is the case of unstable equilibrium when the center of gravity is above the center of buoyancy and the 
last case is the with center of gravity and center of buoyancy coincides. That is for a special case when the distribution of mass is uniform throughout the volume of the body. In that case, the body is in neutral equilibrium. That means, if you give any position with any angular position at any inclination at any configuration, if you submerge the body, body will be in equilibrium at that particular configuration itself. That is the concept of neutral equilibrium. Now, we will discuss the same thing under floating condition, but there is a difference. First of all, you must know that why separately we are discussing the submerged and floating bodies. What is the key point of difference between a submerged and the floating body? First difference is that as it tells very simple literally that a floating body means a part of the body is submerged, not the entire volume of the body is submerged in the fluid. Therefore, the buoyancy force will be equal to the weight of the displaced volume of the fluid, that means weight of that volume of the fluid which corresponds to the immersed volume of the solid, that is number one. Number two is that obviously under equilibrium condition of a floating body, the weight of the body must balance the buoyancy force and next is that they should be collinear and buoyancy force equal to the weight of the displaced volume. Therefore, floating body requirement is that the density of the body has to be lower than the density of the fluid. So, that the weight of the displaced volume of the fluid, which is the immersed volume partially immersed, that means not the total volume of the fluid must be equal to the weight of the fluid. This is very simply I have written school level. Now, what happens when you give a angular hill for this floating body, what is most important is that here though the center of gravity may remain unchanged if there is no movement of mass within the solid body, but center of buoyancy is obviously changing. This is because though the total displaced volume remains same to make it equilibrium and to be equal to its weight, but some portion is getting more immersed and some portion is getting out of the water level depending upon the direction of the hill. So, therefore, the center of buoyancy, the distribution of the immersed volume changes though the total immersed volume remains same. So, that center of buoyancy moves, it does not become same as the earlier one which we saw in case of submerged body. That is the key difference, so that it comes separately for investigation of the angular stability in case of a floating bodies. Okay. With that, let us see that what happens in case of a floating body. Okay, good. Now, let us consider this is the free surface and let us consider the floating body a typical cross section of a ship. Let us consider a floating body like this. This is the axis of symmetry, a symmetrical body like this. Now, let us consider a floating body. This is the part which is immersed in the fluid and this is outside the fluid. Let us consider this is the initial position and here we will see one interesting thing. Now, first of all, if gravity is below this center of buoyancy, center of gravity it is always being stable equilibrium that you can see by yourself. I am not going to that. Let us consider the gravity is above its center of buoyancy. Now, we have seen in case of submerged bodies, they immediately obviously tell whenever the gravity is above the center of buoyancy, then obviously it is unstable equilibrium, but in this case it may not be so. Then angular stability may not always be destroyed if the center of gravity is always above B, you cannot tell them. Now, center of buoyancy is the center of this volume okay? and we consider the center of gravity is above B. One thing is true that the weight and the buoyancy force that is always true, they balance now, in this case what happens, now what I have told just now, you see that if you give a small tilt in this direction and let me draw the figure like this. Now, let in the displaced position, this is the old line of symmetry or the line which contain the center of gravity and the center old vertical line containing the center of gravity and old center of buoyancy B. Now, it is obvious that if I re retract or retrace this line, let this line be this line. So, therefore, we see that this portion of the body 
hatched portion has gone out of the free surface which was earlier there underneath the free surface. And this portion of the body which was above the free surface has gone down below the free surface. That means that if we give a tilt here, more of the volume in this portion will go under the free surface and some volume in this portion will automatically come up. So therefore, we see the distribution of the immersed volume changes. Obviously, if this be the old center of buoyancy, new center of buoyancy will be shifted somewhere here in this direction, let B dash is the new center of buoyancy. So what it does now, if this be the G, now the force acting on this body is W vertically downward through G and then we see that this AB. Now it is not very easy to say that always it will be a overturning moment or a destroying moment. In this case what do you see? That if I make a projection of the vertical through G like this, under this particular condition, this is which moment? Restoring moment, very good. So under this case it is a restoring moment. That means it is angularly stable. But can you tell always if B shifts in this direction, just common sense you tell, always there will be restoring moment? No. If this B dash comes here, that means if I draw the vertical projection or a vertical line from the center of gravity and if B cannot cross this vertical line towards this direction, direction of hill, then it cannot create a restoring moment. So long it is here, so this force will always create a overturning moment. That means whether there will be a restoring moment or an overturning moment is not conclusively decided by the position of G above B, but the shifting of B with respect to G. If the shifting of B takes place like this, that it crosses this vertical line in that direction, then it creates a restoring moment. Otherwise, it creates a overturning moment. So this is the condition. This is better stated analytically by this fact that if we make a vertical projection from the new center of buoyancy, make a vertical line, extend that vertical line and let it intersect with the old vertical line containing the center of gravity and the old center of buoyancy at a point M. And this point M is known as meta center. This is very important concept, meta center. And usually for a small angular hill, if we do not consider a very big angular hill, that means a small perturbation with small angular hill in either direction. So you can see if you give a tilt in that direction, the same condition will be there. That means B either create a overturning or a restoring couple depending upon its relative displacement with respect to G. Now this A meta center is usually for a small angular hill is a geometrical criteria. It depends upon the dimension of the body and this geometrical shape. So it becomes a geometrical criteria, meta center. Now we just see that the way we appreciate it that if B crosses this vertical line in the direction of the hill, then it will give a restoring moment, otherwise overturning moment can be told with respect to this very important point meta center that if meta center is above the center of gravity, in this case it is that, then the body is under stable equilibrium. And if the meta center is below, that means in this case, if this is the shift, then meta center, then the vertical line will always intersect at a point at the same point known as M, which is below G. That means when meta center is below G, then we can tell that the body is not in stable equilibrium. And the height G M, that means the height from the center of gravity to the meta center, if it is below, this is the height. This is known as the along this old vertical line or the line of symmetry you can tell is known as the meta centric. That means G M, this distance is known as the meta centric height, which can be also written as G M is equal to B M minus B G. If you write like that, when meta center is below center of gravity, then G m is negative. That means we can tell G m is greater than 0, G m less than 0 and G m is equal to 0, three cases. When G m is greater than 0, meta center is above the center of gravity. By this formula, we define as 
analytically that it is greater than 0, m is above g and the body is in stable equilibrium. When g m less than 0 means m is below g, so we define it at b m minus b g, so that g m is less than 0, then the body is unstable equilibrium, that the couple created because of the tilt by the weight and the buoyancy force is an overturning one that is the unstable equilibrium and when metacentric height coincides with the g that means the b is displaced in such a way that the vertical line through b just intersects g that means again in the displaced position a b and w become collinear if it satisfies that that means g m is 0 that means b m is equal to b g which means the vertical projection from the new center of buoyancy intersects this point then this is the neutral equilibrium. So, therefore, it is not conclusive only from g above b which was there for submerged body it will be under unstable equilibrium for a floating body. The key point is that in this case since the center of buoyancy moves towards the direction of the hill it gives a advantageous condition that means when the center of buoyancy moves towards the direction of the hill it gives an advantageous condition even if it is a top heavy that means the center of gravity is above the center of buoyancy till it is in equilibrium stable equilibrium provided the meta center is above g. That means the buoyancy is shifted in such a way that it crosses the vertical line from the center of gravity. So, that it creates a restoring couple to allow the body to come back to its original position. Well, so this concept is now clear. Now, with this concept in metacentric height, I will derive now a very important relation. What exactly is required for designing a floating bodies in practice for example a ship that the metacentric height should be made positive so that for any angular rotation or angular disturbance of the ship about any horizontal axis ship is stable now this metacentric height i have told or the metacenter position of metacenter is a function of the geometrical shape of the ship or geometrical shape of the floating bodies so if we know beforehand by calculate this metacentric height from the from a functional relationship of the metacentric height with the geometrical dimension of the body accordingly we can design the ship that make the geometrical dimension so that the metacentric height is always positive and it should be as big as that means mg should be high at high positive value so that stability is ensured even under a greater perturbation so for that we try to seek or we seek a functional relationship between the metacentric height or the position of the metacenter in terms of the geometry of the body let us do that. Well, again we uh, again we make the same thing that uh, this is the body, uh, we have the floating bodies, body like this, make the floating body like this. that is the cross section of a ship rather you take a cross section of a ship this is the plain area now after the hill let us oh it could have been better with different well so this is after hill is the displaced position now let us see first we consider a simple case always that g is above b that is not the simple case simple case is the g remains unchanged let us consider this is g but the old b obviously when we give a tilt in this direction what will happen old b will be shifted here b dash so the weight acting through this and this is acting b a b a b and this is w now, if we trace this old line of line for the plane of flotation, we can write or we can sorry the draw like this. Let this is the point O, point of intersection of the original plane of flotation. Well, this is the original plane of flotation and the new plane of flotation, and let they intersect along their centroidal axis. We assume that. Now, one thing is true so long w is equal to a b, well w is equal to a b that means this is the w, this always we consider equilibrium. 
only we are considering the stability that is angular stability. Then the buoyancy force W is unique, so buoyancy force is unique. So therefore, by the principle of Archimedes, the immersed volume should remain same whether it is given a tilt or not, which means the volume which has come up that means this hatched portion must be equal to the volume at this hatched portion which has gone inside the liquid. This is the key point, nothing else. So, this volume is equal to this volume of liquid. So, this is all right. Now, if we simply define the center of buoyancy with respect to any frame of reference. Now, we will have to do, let us consider this as O in this original figure. We consider the axis like X and this is as Z, vertically downward Z and the horizontal axis is on the plane of flotation and take Y the perpendicular to the plane. That means, if we see this cross section like this, a cross section like this, a cross section, just an arbitrary cross section like this. So, Y will be along this direction. That means, if we define O somewhere here, this is the O Y. That means, this is in this perpendicular X Y and vertically downward is the Z. I think it is all right. Now, if we define the center of buoyancy x coordinate as x b, as x b, which is definitely 0 under this condition, because this is the z axis, that means distance from the z axis. So, x b, then we can write that v, the immersed volume into x b is nothing but, if we take here a prismatic body of the fluid or the volume immersed, whose cross sectional area is d a. And Z is the coordinate, that means this is the height of this prismatic element, that means or Z coordinate of this point, whatever you can tell, that this becomes equal to Z into d A into x, sorry, Z into d A into x, rather we can write Z x d A. All right. Now, you see that here what happens, that is the Z d A is the volume and moment of the volume, that is the center of buoyancy. Now, this case it is 0, if we define center of buoyancy on this line, this case it is 0. Now, this case what we can do, we can, now the axes are defined from this, so therefore, Z and X will be like that, but here if we take now, this is immersed here. So, if here if we take a prismatic volume like this, what is its height? So, this d a we can show it here, this is the d a. This is typically the elemental area in this plan, that means this view. Now, where here if we take the same prismatic element d a, here the height is equal to z, that means z is this one with respect to this coordinate axis x and this is z plus this extra amount which has become immersed in the fluid. So, if this is the x, that means the x coordinate of this prismatic element from the coordinate axis origin, then this will be x tan theta where theta is the angle of hill, that means this is theta if we make this as theta or the vertical through this O with the old vertical theta, because angle between two lines is equal to angle between their perpendicular. So, theta is the angular hill, that means theta is the angle between the old plane of flotation and the new plane of flotation or between the old vertical line and the new vertical line. So, this is the theta. So, therefore, if this is x and this is theta, so this extra part is what x tan theta, that means now we can write v x b dash, if x b dash is the this is the b dash, that is the, this is the b dash, that is the x coordinate of the new center of buoyancy. What we can write? We can write that is equal to z plus x tan theta into d a. Simply we subtract this upper one from this one, we get v into x b dash minus x b is equal to tan theta is constant because angular hill is constant throughout the body. So, therefore, we can take tan theta into what? x square d a. 
sorry x yes one x is missing for the moment. So, z x plus tan theta d a is the volume elementary volume and moment for moment x. So, simply x square tan theta all right. So, this is equal to now you see we can write this is okay. Now, we can write well now what we can write we can write that v into x b dash minus x b is equal to what tan theta tan theta into x square d. Now, x b dash minus x b for small angle of theta if you make a projection from this to this axis this is the axis z. So, for small angle of theta this can be written as b this is b and if this vertical line intersects at a point let this is m. So, this b b dash can, re, can be written as b m tan theta b m tan theta. For small angle we can write this if we take if we make an perpendicular from b dash on this old vertical line which is the z axis rather we can tell for small angle this perpendicular does not make any change from b to this point of projection. So, we can take simply from this right angle triangle this vertical line meets at m. So, this is b m tan theta ok. So, we can write b m tan theta for small angle tan theta because this projection may not coincide with b that is why the small angle concept we can write this is this is almost equal to b m tan theta. So, tan theta tan theta cancels well. So, we get what b m sorry this is tan b m tan theta. So, b is there. So, b m is equal to x square d a divided by v. Now, what is this x square d a? What is this x square d a? If we just see here x square d a now we see to this figure that means x is the distance of any elemental area here from this y axis. That means, this x square d a which is there in the numerator of this expression of b m represents what the moment of second moment of area of the plane of flotation. This is the plane of flotation that means, I see here as a section from here. If I take a section from here and look from top that is the sectional plan we see that is the plane of flotation. So, x square d a is the second moment of area of the plane of flotation about the centroidal axis about the centroidal axis which is perpendicular to the plane of rotation. This is the plane of rotation. That means, this is the second moment of area be very careful this one second moment of area of the plane of flotation about this O y which means physically about the centroidal axis that means, this axis here which is perpendicular to the plane of flotation. Plane of flotation is the x z plane. So, y axis is perpendicular to that or you can tell that it is the centroidal axis of rotation about which the rotation is taking place. So, if you can understand this nomenclature x square d a as we defined as i simply i we make i y again y makes a confusion that you will have to take this as the y axis. So, simply i tell i so that i can write b m is equal to this is a very important formula i by v. So, nomenclature is like this b m means what is b m it is the distance from the center of buoyancy to the meta center along the old line vertical line where center of buoyancy and center of gravity was acting. So, along this this is the b m where the g m is the meta centric height b m therefore, this is the definition and usually it is told as meta centric radius not very common, but you will see in my book I have written that not all the books they tell because it is not a very common terminology as g m metacentric height, but b m you can tell metacentric radius distance between the buoyancy and the meta center along the old vertical line. So, this is b m which is equal to i by v. So, you will have to recognize the nomenclature like this v is the immersed volume that is the volume of the solid which is immersed in the fluid displaced volume and i is the moment of inertia of the plane of flotation moment of inertia of the plane of flotation about a about the centroidal axis which is perpendicular to the plane of rotation or the axis of the rotation. 
that means if you simply take a simply parallel pipette the plane of flotation is the horizontal projection of the edge the horizontal that the, this plane and this perpendicular axis is the centroidal axis perpendicular to the plane of rotation. So, the nomenclature of I should be very important. Now, you see in case of a ship, if you see the structure of a ship, now the ship, if you see a ship, now this is the, now if you see the ship, this is the elevation. If you see its plan, now the structure of the ship is such that like this, there may be two axes, vertical axis, a horizontal axis, let x and y. Now, movement of the ship about, now you see one thing that the movement of the ship about this y axis, that means in this direction is known as rolling, rolling, transverse axis and movement of the ship about this axis, that means about the longitudinal axis, that means in this direction is known as pitching. Now, when the angular stability for rolling, that means about this y axis, pitching is about the transverse axis, that means it moves like this and rolling is about this longitudinal axis. When rolling angular stability with rolling is considered, then the i corresponds to the second moment of area about O i. Similarly, when the angular stability with respect to pitching is considered, that means it is its angular movement about x axis, then the moment of inertia about the axis x O x is considered. Okay, let this is O x. Now, you see from the typical geometry of the ship, the angular, the second moment of area about y axis is much lower than the second moment of area about x axis because the longitudinal dimension is more. So, therefore, I is lower in case of rolling as compared to that in case of pitching, clear. So, therefore, B m is I by V. So, therefore, in case of rolling B m is small because I is small, rolling is about O y axis. So, about O y the inertia moment of inertia is small. So, therefore, stability with respect to rolling is more important than the stability with respect to pitching. Ship is almost stable with respect to its rotational motion or with respect to pitching about x axis because the moment of inertia of any element about the x axis is much higher. So, rolling for rolling the stability is more important. That means, we will have to see the angular stability point of view that it is the moment of inertia of the plane of flotation about an axis makes it more vulnerable for its angular stability in a particular direction. Well, thank you.